Hi everyone, hope you are all okay and keeping well. Lockdown does test our mental and spiritual strength. And so I hope that you're setting aside time to read your Bibles and pray. We are our best at our best in our sameness when we are speaking to our Heavenly Father and when we are then listening to Him speak to us through His Word, the Bible. Today is Good Friday. For the first time in 34 years, I won't be preaching uh, publicly about the death of Jesus for our sins or conducting a communion service in obedience to all that Jesus said we must do in order to remember Him. Uh, Good Friday traditionally has always been one of the best attended services of the year. But this year is different. This year we remember in our homes, in small groups amongst our families, or perhaps even on our own. And I'm well aware at this time of those who are living on their own during this time of lockdown, the loneliness, the fear, perhaps even the despair. And so if there's any way in which we can help you, please phone me or send a WhatsApp or phone somebody else, even if you just feel the need for uh, human contact or to listen to another human voice or speak to another human voice. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to do a very short devotional. I've written something longer on Isaiah chapter 53, which is available on our email. If, you, if we don't have your email, please WhatsApp it to me or let me have it. And then after that, we're going to do a short communion service. So you might want to pause the video now and prepare some bread or grape juice or wine. That's if you've still got any wine left. It really doesn't matter so much what we use. It's the meaning behind the symbols of bread and wine that really matters. So here's a short devotion from the NIV Bible. As he hung on the cross dying, Jesus spoke seven times, the most important of which is in John chapter 19 and verse 30, when he said that it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. All of human history has been moving towards this one final moment, the death of Jesus. From the first hint in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 that the serpent would strike the heel of the man all the way through to the prophecy of Simeon to Mary, Jesus' mother, that a sword would pierce her soul in Luke chapter 2, the whole world waited for these and many other prophecies to be fulfilled. And they were painfully fulfilled as Jesus gave up his spirit on the cross. All the Old Testament prophecies pointed to this moment. At this moment, the great high priest became the sacrificial lamb. The mysterious predictions became a reality in the life and death of this man who was God. This God-man who turned himself over to death so that even his murderers could be forgiven. This God-man who would remove the sins of the world and even of his own mother who had watched with sorrow as the prophecies became a reality. On that cruel cross and this God man whose willing sacrifice sufficiently and completely covered the sins of men and women past present and future angels prophets even Jesus himself predicted his death at the hands of sinners but that his death would also be for sinners God's justice demands death for sin God's mercy provided the willing, perfect sacrifice for sin. And so the cross is God's gift of love. On that cross, love made a man die so that his enemies live. And on that cross, the only perfect human being who has ever lived died so that sinners can be forgiven. And on that day, everything that separates people from God was torn apart in the brutal tearing of Jesus' body. He did it for you. He did it for me. The sacrifice was the only way that your sins and my sins could be paid for without your own eternal death. Christ's death paid the price of sin. And so when Jesus said it is finished, he meant there was nothing more to do. It has all been done, nothing left to pay. He paid it all totally and completely and permanently. Have you accepted Jesus' death as full payment for your sins? And how does it feel to be completely free from eternal death? And now we come to our communion service. Ideally, communion is to be shared amongst the gathered family of God. But these are different days and these are different circumstances. And so we, today we do it in our homes amongst just a small group or perhaps even on our own. And 
just as they regularly do it like this in places like North Korea and China and other countries in the world where Christian gatherings are permanently uh, prohibited. And of course, there have been times in history when the church has not been able to gather together for safety and security reasons such as now. We're not the first generation of Christians to experience this. Uh, during the Spanish uh, flu epidemic in 1918, South Africa lost uh, 300,000 people in two months. And it's interesting when you read the history, in 1854 when Spurgeon went to London, the cholera epidemic broke out in London and Spurgeon was brave in moving amongst the people and sharing God's word with them and praying for them. But he did give this advice. He said, wash your hands, keep social distancing and no large gatherings. And so it is then as now, things uh, remain the same as far as dealing with epidemics are concerned. And talking about history, as we turn to the words of our communion service now, written by Thomas Cramner, influenced by Martin Bucer, who was a Swiss reformer who fled from the continent to England and helped Cramner out. These words were written during times of persecution and hardship and pressure. And maybe as we read them again today, familiar words, words that have been used for 500 years, perhaps they will have greater meaning for us today because of the circumstances and the times in which we live now. And so let's pray together. Merciful Lord, we do not dare to come to your table trusting in our righteousness, but only in great mercy. We are not fit to gather up the crumbs under your table, but your mercy is everlasting. Grant, therefore, that we may by faith eat the flesh and drink the blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, to be united to him and he to us. <clears throat> Hear us, Heavenly Father, and grant that we, receiving this bread and wine, in accordance with your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, to remember his death and suffering, may share in his most blessed body and blood, who on the night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which he shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it and in remembrance of me. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, which was given for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, drink this in remembrance, that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Let's uh, pray together. Almighty God, we bring you praise and thanksgiving, and ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a lifelong offering to you. Lord, accept this duty and service we owe you, not because we deserve it, but because of Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name alone we come to you. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We plan to do another little uh, video on Easter Sunday, and so I hope you can join us then, and God bless you all.